everyone welcome back to another video in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to crochet Hazel's fall vest and I have been wanting to make a fall vest for a while now and I'm so excited to have finally been able to share this with you guys um, this pattern is really easy all you need is some medium four worsted weight yarn and some buttons um, you can use as many colors as you want if you are a beginner, this is very simple to make. All you need to know how to do is work a double crochet and a single crochet. In this video, you are also going to need um, three buttons or as many buttons as you want. The difference between this sweater and this sweater is the fact that when we go around the vest, I went around two times on this sweater with the lime green and then put one round of all silver or gray color and then with this one I went around once with the main color when you're supposed to work around the sweater and I put two rounds of the black color so like I said you can customize this you can um, definitely decorate it in the back by putting an applique on the sweater so there it is there is the vest and you can um, choose where you put the buttons as well but I put mines a little bit more apart by six or seven stitches and we are working entirely from the bottom up in rows which is what I really like usually my patterns uh, call for you to work at the neck and then work your way down but we are not doing that today so that's what that looks like And let's go ahead and start making these sweaters. For today's video, you will be needing Vanna's Choice in the color black. And you will also need the color Wheat by Vanna's Choice. Um, you can use any colors that you want. And this size is for a small dog. If you would like to see a large size dog pattern, please like this video and comment below if I get enough people to request it I will design a large dog vest until then let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial to begin we are going to start with a slip knot we want to chain a total of 50 and just to let you guys know we are working from the bottom up to for the vest and we want to chain really loosely because we are starting from the bottom and we do not want our work to curl up. So there's one, two, three. Keep on chaining until we reach a total of 50. I have 50 chains now and what we want to do is put one double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Everybody knows that this uh, loop does not count on your hook as a chain. So what we want to do is go right here. There's one, two, three and four and that is the chain we want to work into to put one double crochet and this skip chain three will count as a double crochet and we should have a total of 48 double crochets so what you want to do is keep repeating this and putting one double crochet across your whole foundation chain okay so we have our 48 chains across including with this chain 3 at the bottom we are now beginning row 2 until row 13 and we are going to chain 3 and then we are going to turn our work now we are going to be repeating the same thing repeating row 1 just putting a chain 3 and this is going to count as your first double crochet so you don't do anything there you will skip this stitch and move on to the second one and put one double crochet okay it's just simple as that putting one double crochet across and then when you get to the end chain three turn your work and just put one double crochet across so what I do when I come to the end of row 13 which is right side facing and you know your right side facing is because of the slip knot tail on the right side 
we are going to turn our work and we are not chaining up okay and we will begin to chain up when we turn our work on the right side chain up 14 1 2 3 4 5 13 and 14 so then what we want to do after we've chained up we want to skip 13 stitches from the chain up which is right here so we go 1 2 3 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So basically it's going to be the 14th stitch is what we're joining to. Whoops, actually you're going to uh, double crochet to join. So cro double crochet to join to the 14th stitch and you have your first vest hole. We then want to put one double crochet into the next 20 stitches. So this counts as our first double crochet because this was just to double crochet to join. So this is the first one and then count 19 more. So in a total you should have 20 stitches but if you count this stitch it's going to be 21 stitches okay so we'll count from here one two three four five six seven eight nine whoops nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and then twenty is the next stitch. Okay, so we did twenty stitches from here. Okay. So that's 20 stitches, but if you put include this um, double crochet to join, that's 21 stitches. Okay, just want to make that clear. I don't want to confuse anybody, but I want to be also very um, descriptive about that detail. Okay, so we should have a total of 14 stitches left. So go ahead and count and make sure you have 14 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Perfect. So what we want to do now is again chain up 14. After you have chained up 14, double crochet to join to the, the top of the chain 3. Okay, you should have a chain 3 at the end and you're going to join to the top of that stitch with a double crochet. And that is your second vest hole. For row 15, you are going to chain three, one, two, and three, and you're going to turn your work. Okay, so we are now right side facing. Now what we want to do is put one double crochet across and we want to work them in these chains. So the chain three counts as one double crochet. So what we're going to do is move on to the second chain which is right here put one double crochet and we want to have a total of 15 sorry 14 double crochets and that's including the chain three
Okay, so then you're just going to continue along and put one double crochet. It's just easy as that. And then you're going to repeat this on the other side where the other vest hole is. Okay, so we've come to the end and we have our 14 chains again here at the end and we want to put one across. Right, and there's the 14th stitch. Okay. So there we have it. There is one double crochet across, and just count and make sure you have 48 double crochets across. And now, what we want to do is chain up three, one, two, and three, and turn your work. And we are now wrong side facing. Now from row 16 all the way until row 23 we are going to chain three and put one double crochet across don't finish off at the end of row 23 because we are going to work around the vest putting a single crochet around and so much more so um, I will meet you guys when we get to row 23 Okay, so I've come to the end of row 23 from the armholes. The armhole was row 16, I'm sorry, row 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we end on the right side. And what we want to do is um, chain one and turn our work on the side and single crochet into the same stitch so just find wherever whatever is available for you okay so there's one and you want to try to go into the actual chains and try not to go outside the chains because then if you do it's going to become more holy being that the chain three was our first stitch so you see how that looks okay so just go evenly around putting one single crochet and when you get back to the first stitch, slip stitch to join. And then chain one and then go around again. And I did mine three times going around to make mine even as possible. So you just kind of have to find... wherever you're going to put your single crochets. So go ahead and continue. I'm going to go around doing this three times around the whole vest and I'll be back. So what you want to do is put your work in half, fold it, and take whatever color yarn that you want to use and the collar is going to be folded to about like right here so what you want to do is join a little pass that so I'm going to take a slip knot and put my hook on there and 
I'm going to fold my collar so I know what we're looking at. So I'd say the collar is going to be about that much. And then I'm going to fold my work in half so then I know it's going to work, right? So here's the collar for the dog's neck or the cat. And I want to join probably around here. Okay, so where this chain three is, just join. Let's see, we'll go right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. What you are going to do next is chain up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I chained up nine where the armhole is. And then I went ahead and I slip stitched into the second stitch next to that. So not the where we chain up, but the stitch before that. Okay. Whoops. And just slip stitch that guy. And you have created your first buttonhole. That's going to be your first buttonhole. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is chain one and finish off. And I did mine... I believe six inches apart from each other not six inches sorry um, I went about six stitches apart from one another for the buttonhole so I counted one two three four five and six and you can give an extra if you want to because you do have to go into the stitch before so you don't want them too close Okay, I am back and I have already completed the buttonholes for our buttons. And um, I already tucked in and weaved the tails that were here. And I'm going to fold my work in half. And this is how I did it when I created the pattern. I folded my work in half like if the dog were going to be wearing it. And what I did was I kind of folded it over so we know how it's going to button up. You want them to align up, right? You don't want to be having buttonholes not matching each other. So I took my main color, and that's the color Wheat by Vanna's Choice. I'm taking my buttons and I'm putting them just about half an inch past where the second row we went around is so right there so go ahead and sew on your button Okay, so I'm sewing, sewing on my button, and make sure un you're underneath, when you are sewing on the button, make sure that you're capturing the stitches, because if not, they will not stay. And I know this by experience, because my buttons weren't staying, because I wasn't capturing the stitches, so make sure that you're actually capturing the stitch. And then all I do is clip that, and I don't cut it too short. I cut it, like, right there, so if I need to go back and fix it, I can. 
Okay, so there we have it. There is our vest. And it's so cute. You could do all kinds of colors with this combination. It's amazing. And you can even embellish it. I love it so much. Um, you can even put armholes if you want to. But to me, a vest doesn't really have any armholes around there. So I didn't bother designing them with armholes. So this is what the finished product looks like. And this is the back of the sweater. Okay, and there it is. There is our adorable fur baby vest. It's so soft too. But I think it's so adorable. It's got its little collar. The buttonholes. Oh, it's so cute. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please feel free to leave a comment below. I love hearing from you guys. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.